Defuse, Mid San Francisco tonight, playing at Ruby Sky. Tonight we're doing a new thing. Uh, basically, so I've been doing the live show. Uh, I've been playing uh, live percussion with my sets for, I don't know, four, five, six years. Uh, but it's always been just the Roland Hand Sonic, which is a smaller uh, unit. It's about this big, and it, it's, it's got everything on there. Congas, tablas, timbales. Well, tonight I'm doing the full-on thing. We're bringing, actually, a full-on V-drum kit. So it's it's an entire big percussion kit. So while I'm DJing, I'm going to be jumping over and uh, doing live drums. We've also got uh, Govinda. 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 And so we hooked up. Uh -huh. We're actually He's actually doing a track on... The new album that I was talking about, Skyline Lounge, and then he calls today and he says, "Dude, I'm in San Francisco. You know, can I? You know, we're gonna. I'm gonna come see the show." And I was like, "Did you bring your violin? Tell me you brought your violin." Uh -huh. He's like, "I did." So yeah. what we're gonna do? We haven't done this before yet, but we're gonna work on uh, perform doing a performance tonight. And this guy's badass. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, but uh, anyway, he is actually in town. He's going to perform a song with me as well. We're going to meet with him a little bit later. Uh, so anyway, it's all about, for me, it's always uh, about bringing uh, a live element into DJing. A lot of times uh, the DJ thing, you know, people go to see a show that, you know, and they want to see interaction. And I think a lot of times it gets a little bit lost. Uh, tonight is really what I, I want to keep doing. It's basically like bringing live instrumentation in and bringing performance into uh, the DJ club world. production partner Mike Karatska out of Los Angeles. We basically have an album coming out called Skyline Lounge. We've been working on that for the last year. Uh, I recently made a move from Texas to LA and so the uh, the big move was to to really get in the studio a lot more. Uh, studio for me has always been about flying in somewhere a lot of times. You have a set number of days to get something done. You work as hard as you can, as fast as you can, and then you know get back on a plane and fly back home. Now, moving to LA for me was really about getting into the writing experience and not having to rush it and just like just let the music evolve the way it was supposed to in a relaxed environment. And so uh, working with Mike Karatska uh, has been amazing. And so I'm really happy. We've got a full length album. We've got about, the album is definitely more on the more, I guess, kind of album tip. It's a lot of vocals. It's a little more laid back. Uh, but we've also written three or four uh, dance singles that are just full on, like hands in the air, pumping tracks. So we're doing both sides of the thing. We're doing the kind of, you know, album vibe, but we're also still writing tracks to, to rock the floor. And I'll be playing a lot of those tonight.
everything. Uh, basically, uh, whatever's funky, whatever's got a good bass line, but it varies all the way from deep house all the way up into uh, progressive house. I call it progressive funk, but it's basically anything that's got kind of a funky edge to it, but maybe has a little bit more on the top to make you think a little bit, give a little bit of spirituality. I'm not afraid of melody, I'm not afraid of lyrics, uh, vocals. Uh, it's just a matter of having those two elements together, something for the dance floor and then something for your mind at the same time. Diffuse. We're in San Francisco for a show tonight at Ruby Sky. Don't forget to check me out at djdefuse.com. Here in San Francisco, the bay, the city by the bay, something like that. I left my heart in it, but I'm still here, so my heart is here in San Francisco. So I didn't really leave it because I'm still here, but I'm flying out tomorrow, so the story will change then. Awesome. Tune and in. As far as uh, like how to get a hold of you, you know, defuse.com yeah, on the go, web. Yeah, there you go. DJDefuse.com. And also MySpace slash Defuse, D F U S E. Did I spell that right? D F U, yeah. D F U S E. Yes. Um, what's your genre? What kind of music do you play? What's your style? You know, I play everything. Uh, basically, uh, whatever's funky, whatever's got a good bass line, but it varies all the way from deep house all the way up into uh, progressive house. I call it progressive funk, but it's basically anything that's got kind of a funky edge to it, but maybe has a little bit more on the top to make you think a little bit, give a little bit of spirituality. I'm not afraid of melody, I'm not afraid of lyrics, uh, vocals. Uh, it's just a matter of having those two elements together, something for the dance floor and then something for your mind at the same time. What, um, what would you say are some of your influences or how did you get into DJ and what brought you here? Uh, well, I mean, it was one of those things where uh, I felt like the live music scene for me had kind of run its course. I was in Austin, Texas, uh, trying to hammer out, get, keep my band together, and nothing was really clicking, nothing was working out. And so eventually what happened is that um, the band broke up. I was sad. I went to a club one night and had that quintessential club experience, and uh, that was it. I just thought it was such an amazing uh it was like a whole new uh, scene that I never even heard of or realized what was going on. And what I loved is that it was just so positive. Whereas, in a lot of times in the, in the live music scene, you have a lot of people that are competing against each other and a lot of negative energy that associates that. With the DJ world, it seemed like everybody was very open and accepting of everything um, and new people and everything like that. And so, uh, the fact that I didn't have to rely on live musicians, that I could just go in and be a DJ and perform the whole thing myself and not depend on anybody else, made it uh, you know really appealing plus I just love the music you know I really got into it and so when I picked up turntables and realized it was an instrument just like turntables were or drums were I should say uh, I was hooked awesome and again what your name and email web address or whatever you want all right this is defuse so. we're here in San Francisco sorry 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 no, no. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. yeah okay now I'll go or you can go uh, MySpace slash, no, I'm not even going to do that, djdefuse.com. You can link to MySpace direct from there to my page. So definitely check it out and uh, hope you enjoy the video. Awesome. Awesome. So I have, okay. So do, the, do your intro again. Say, hey, this is Defuse. What's going on? This is Defuse. I'm here in San Francisco to do a show at Ruby Sky tonight. Uh, definitely check out my website. It's djdefuse.com. And uh, looking forward to it. It should be a good night. Tell me a little bit about the evolution of uh, transitioning from 
playing predominantly, you know, CDs and records to bringing musical elements in, a little bit of background? Um, well, really, uh, I would say, uh, you know, live music, uh, I was in bands for years and years, uh, and mostly industrial music. For I had a band called Culture Industry in Texas, uh, which we had slightly regional success. It was mostly, we played just in Austin, and every club we played in was legendarily shut down six months after we played across the board. So it got to be where we put every club out of business. And uh, it was time to, to do something different. Uh, but basically, um, I, I was I was just a drummer my whole life. That's what I was really into. And when I when I went to a club after the band had broken up, and had that quintessential club experience, and saw what an amazing uh, uh, scene and, and community it was, uh, then I just started becoming a DJ. And I really didn't play the drums for years and years because turntables kind of filled that gap. Um, and so when uh, Roland uh, came out with V drums and came out with the Hand Sonic, it was the first time that actual an electronic piece of equipment could actually mimic and, and, and feel like a real drum. And so the fact that I could pack it in my suitcase, I was like, well, cool, I can kind of now get back into what I love doing it, which is kind of making a performance aspect of the show. So um, that's kind of where it went from there. Tell me something, uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, when DJing as a professional is really good and when it's not so good. Uh, well, it's not good when you're just like, you show up to a club and uh, the promoter hasn't worked it right or the weather's weird or something's happening and the club's like not even half full. That's rough. Um, and uh, so you get on the decks and you're trying, but a lot of times with the room half full, you can you could bring Jesus Christ himself on stage and it's not going to really make a difference. People want to be around other people. So the, that gets rough. The travel gets rough. I mean, I'm away all the time, you know. I mean, I get home, I do studio work all week, and then I jump on a plane on Friday. Generally return on Sunday if I'm lucky. Uh, and so that can get, that can kind of wear on you a bit. Um, was that the, no, do, do you want the positive aspects or were we just doing the bad aspects? It doesn't matter, I cut it up. Okay. Uh, the good stuff, uh, obviously, is just, man, out there performing for people and, and uh, hopefully giving people a musical experience like you get when you listen to the music. That's really the whole reason uh, that we do, you know, what we do is just to share the music the way it makes us feel. Hopefully we can share that with people and they can get the same experience and the same, uh, you know, I, I, music for me is that's it for me. I mean, you know, when I basically, way back in high school, I realized that there was nothing else on this this planet I'd rather be doing. And the fact that I'm able to go out there and do it, it's a dream come true. So every day is a, is a day I'm thankful for. What do you think you'd be doing if you weren't a DJ? I'd be, uh, I really enjoy pole dancing. Uh, I'd be a, a male stripper. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like for, for you know, uh, Maybe like transgender or well, I, I'm just like I'm in the I'm in this little people a lot, so maybe just like open a little people uh, strip club where I would dance. Uh, give me a quick story. Yeah. Give me a quick a quick uh, bit about a party or an event that you thought was really gone off like a real positive. Like wow, that was a sick party in the last maybe year or two. You know what? Uh, let's see. What was a good one in the last year or two? I'm thinking last year or two. Well, probably two, what was it, two years ago? What was the love parade? Two years ago. No, that was, yeah, two years ago. The one here, the, this one was really good, but the sound system kept cutting out on my particular stage when I played. Now, two years ago when I played, it was the first love parade. It was unbelievable because literally, uh, you know, here in San Francisco, there's like 30,000 people and everybody's crowded around this uh, semi. And, you know, I'm just playing the drum and everybody's on dancing and this thing is shaking so bad that I'm literally having to hold on to the railings while it's going back and forth. A lot of the DJs couldn't even play because a lot of, back then most were playing records. I always happened to play, I always carried a lot of CDs. So they strapped the CD players down to the turntables and literally this thing is just going crazy. I mean, you can check it out on the website. There's still footage of it, but that was just an amazing moment just to have that much energy and that much. People were just ready to go crazy. And, uh, you know, it, in a beautiful day in San Francisco, right on the waterfront. It was just great. And then later at that night, what, I played, I played at uh, Kelly's Mission Rock and uh, ended up playing from, I, I guess, 2 in the morning until sunrise, right on the, on the outdoor pier. And I'll never forget the sun coming up and just people wrapped all the way around. So you just go it like you know. Right. Do you, you do you want the do you need the love parade story again? I like the love parade story. Okay. I was there. I mean, 